Okay, how do we sketch velocity time and acceleration time graphs when all we're given at the beginning is a displacement time graph such as one up here? Okay, well, to do this, what we need to always remember is that the relation between velocity, acceleration, and displacement. Well, we know the velocity is equal to x over t, distance divided by time. We also know that, really, that what that is, x over t, if I had a small amount of x, dx, and a small amount of t, okay, I could write it like that, little, little d, the d just means small difference in, well, that equals the gradient of the xt graph. Okay, so the velocity is the gradient of the xt graph. Well, let's have a look at this xt graph. First thing you do is you spot some points of interest. Well, points of interest are points where things happen, things change. There's a point here where something changes. So this point here. And what I'm going to do is, it's much easier always if you draw these underneath each other. I'm going to draw a dotted line there. So the time scale is the same for all of them. Something happens here as well. Something interesting, it changes, the graph changes. You could also put zero if you wanted to, but really, we don't know. You know There's not actually anything changes, it just appears at that moment. Right, so what do we know? Well, let's consider the gradient. The gradient here, what is it? It's positive and it's constant. So the, I've said the velocity is the gradient. Well, the gradient is positive and constant. Velocity is positive, it's above zero, and constant in that period there. Then what happens here? The gradient here is zero. Well, if the gradient is zero, the velocity must be zero. You'll notice at the moment I'm not trying to connect these lines up at all. I'm just drawing them on as they are, so zero, there we go. What's happening here? Well, first of all, the gradient is sloping downwards, so it's negative. It starts off very low and it gets higher, so negative and becoming increasingly negative. Okay, so it starts off very low and it gets increasingly negative. So, there we go. It does that. I'm just going to join these up now. So there you go. That, that's the velocity time profile for this distance time graph. Right, how do I now convert this velocity time profile, so this velocity time graph, into acceleration time. Well, I know now that acceleration is actually equal to velocity divided by time. Or if I were to write it, little change in velocity divided by little change in time. It looks very, very similar to the one above. That's because it's identical. The only difference is, rather than talking about an xt graph, it's the gradient of the vt graph. So what I'm looking at is the gradient of this. Well, the gradient there is 0. The gradient here is 0. Gradient here is negative and constant. Okay, so between there and there, and there should, this should be zero. Between here and here is zero, and now it's negative and constant, like that. So I'll join up there. If you really, in, if you really want to, you could say, right, what's this gradient here? Well, it's negative because it slopes down. It's incredibly high. It's actually negative infinity. Okay, so if you want to, you could just write put a spike up there and down this one. I suppose we'll go straight up the bottom of the graph there. That should be an infinity, not an 8. Okay? So that's how you draw velocity time and acceleration time graphs from a displacement time graph. Okay? It's all about the gradient.